Jasleen is going uh, is going to take us through a plethora of knowledge and innovative learning techniques, particularly adhering to the NEP 2020. It's a pleasure and honor to have you here today, Ms. Jasleen. And you may please take over the stage and start with the session. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was like quite an introduction for me. So uh, before I start, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity because I've been like looking forward to interact with teachers from across the world. And my only motive right now is to inculcate technology as much as possible in our learning. Because I feel students are a way like moving a step ahead of us in, in adding technology to their classroom or to their worksheets, assignments, and we, we teachers need to catch up on it as much as possible. Uh, okay, so is my voice audible to everyone? Is my voice clear, Harsha? Yes, yes, it's definitely. All right. So uh, before I start, I'll, I'll give my introduction since I'm going to take a workshop about digital storytelling. Storytelling. So I'll be taking up my introduction, the whole session through different digital tools that are available online. So I definitely want to start the session by knowing the participants present over here, the respective teachers, principals, educators. And my idea for today is not to give you any too much information, load you with information or teach you about things that are, you know, just going to be in theory. It's about exchange of learning. So the idea here is that whatever I'll be talking yes. about here. Yes. Uh, actually, the voice is not uh, clear. There's some kind of crackling or, you know, uh, just a second. I'll change the. Um, is it better now? I have changed it the Zoom is... settings volume. No, it's. Still a little, some crackling is there. Um, now, if I go with other earphones, then I'll not be able, like, I'm not sure about the audio then. Yes, it's better than before. Just try to speak, like, uh, yeah. In this uh, okay, is it like I'll be talking about different, different things now? Is it uh, clear? Let me see if I can increase the volume control. Yes, yes, I think it's, it's better now. It's a little better. Okay. Uh, no, it's still cracking, echo, all these things are happening. You are audible. Okay, I see the chat box. I think I'm audible now. I'll go away. Yes, yes, I think yeah. I'm audible. Yeah. All right. In, in case this problem continues, then let me know I'll try another earphones or without headphones or join my audio from phone. So yeah, talking about digital tools and everything, these are the gaps that we need to cover up the already excited. Hey, hey, oh, yeah. Very, very sorry to disturb just yeah, yeah. some wire problem or earphone problem. Maybe can you just try another one? Yeah, let me just try with another one. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how Clear? Would it be? Is my audio clear now? Not really. Not sure if it's going to be clear from this one. What about now? Yeah, now it seems seems pretty good actually. I'm just try something. Mm -hmm. This is like not a microphone, but. I think the laptop will catch enough noise. I I don't I hope there's no background disturbance in this one. No, 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 it's it's fine, it's fine. It's clear now, I think. Yeah. This is better? Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I'll just quickly share my screen first because uh the tools that I'm going to talk about uh, are not just going to be here in theory. I want to show you all how to use these tools and before that get to know you all better so to understand how you can incorporate all of this in your classroom. Okay. So yeah, this is going to be a workshop uh, workshop about digital storytelling. And hi, I'm Jasmine Korsonli. And before I begin, I have a little introduction about me. So I love writing in any form. And OK, let's uh, clear all the annotations on the screen. So yeah, I love writing in any form of content that can be creative, academic. So if you want me to come up with a poem on the spot, if you want me to come up with a story on the spot, or maybe write an elaborate essay on, let's say, any P2020, I'm more than happy to write about, write in any form of content. And here to talk about anything related to education, teaching, and learning. Most important is that I believe as a teacher, you don't have to be 
just someone who teaches and gives out information gives out this like loads of knowledge to children or people who are there in front of you it's all about learning from them so this session is going to be about learning from you all how i can take up learning how, how i can incorporate your experience in my training sessions and my life and journey so this is a little bit about me now to know you all better i have a question for all of you so the question today that i have for all of you is if you could have a superpower as a teacher what would it be if you could have a superpower as a teacher what would it be anything you can write it in the chat box if anyone wants to unmute and tell me if the unmute um, permissions are there oh, then no, no. right now yeah. we haven't given the unmute one no problem then you can write it in the chat box also so if you could have one superpower as a teacher what would it be mind reading definitely mind reading to remove the fail uh, okay yeah to remove the failure from students read a child's mind read the mind of a student okay so all right yeah that looking forward to more such options right now so yeah okay we do as you be a child with student definitely to be at their age so to quickly transform myself back to 20 years 30 years like that okay uh like to develop of students holistically yes but what about a superpower like you know a superpower could be uh my superpower would be to write on the blackboard too quickly so that by the time i'm writing the students don't get a chance to talk or they don't have their lunch behind my back so this could be a superpower more content for the development of students try to understand child thinking i think most of us are right now falling for reading a child's mind yes so if you were a super human imagine yourself as a teacher as a principal as an educator as a student teacher entering the classroom wearing a cape wearing a cape so you are a super hero right now and you have a super power what would that super power be yes i would like be like student dhruv tara beautiful uh be a super teacher with digital tools definitely okay mind reading mind a lot of stand in students point of view yes okay he will be show what i teach my superpower is keeping busy in oral okay all right to try to understand child thinking so the two points that we getting most of all over here is one either be able to read the child's mind that okay i'm going i'm talking standing over here talking about digestive system respiratory system going on and on and on and there's a student sitting right in front of me who is physically super present in my class he is nodding the head he is taking notes but mentally he is thinking about what he going to have and what is he going to have in lunch at home so this is what i want to know mental presence of a child okay that's an amazing superpower get to know them exactly understand students misconceptions and problems i like the term misconceptions here it's an important part of storytelling that i'll be talking about keep updated themselves from surroundings all right first to be a proper human feel the emotions of students yes i feel that as a teacher as an educator when we are standing in front of the class and giving all the possible instruction there's a chance that the student is not connecting with us he's just there because attendance is mandatory school has made it education is mandatory right so they're just sitting there but they're not mentally present reaching to individuals level yes a uh, a biggest gap that i sort of feel is we place ourselves you know a level above the students when we are teaching so we are not able to speak their language and the moment we start speaking their language they start taking us for granted so how do we twist this gap and you know fill it properly this is where storytelling comes into play all right effortlessly i could achieve all learning objectives so some amazing responses thank you for all the responses that i've got now my question the reason why i started with this question is now i want you all to like take a second and imagine yourself as a superhero entering the class wearing a cape a beautiful mask of your choice and just like super heroing your way into the classroom now you are not a teacher for them and right now when i started with this question this particular question it's called set induction that means i am inducting my topic inducing my topic into this class with something that you could relate to that you could have fun with and that you could connect with 
So this is the sort of question that we need to start with where storytelling comes into picture. You make the classroom more relatable for a child. So right now when I ask you if you could be a superpower, there's quickly a visual in your head and imagining, you know, an imagination going here and there in your mind thinking, oh, if I would be a superhero, what would it be? So like that, you became a character of this webinar. Now you are not just a participant. You are a character of this webinar and your responses have helped me go ahead with the webinar. So you are now a part of the story. This, all of this is going, is considered as beginning or setting of a narrative for the classroom. Now this classroom is not going to be a lecture that I'm just going to sit here and deliver it to you all. Now it's a story set where you are a character as a superhero. I am a narrator over here. Like this, when we are entering the classroom, when we are entering the classroom, thanks for all the responses, by the way. So uh, I've read most of the responses. So yeah, thank you so much for that. So like that, when I'm saying that, when we are entering the classroom, there's a narrative that we set. And what, that narrative is what connects a child to a teacher in the moment so that they are mentally and physically present with us from time one to the end of the time. Now, uh, storytelling is not, yeah, lessons are learned, but stories are remembered. It's something that I understood when for the first time when I was sitting in the classroom and my English teacher came up to the board and she started talking about, you know, her day. I was like, why is ma'am talking about her day? What do I do about her day? But slowly she started to bring it to the topic of diary entry. Then she told us the format. Then she told us how it helps us to uh, write about our emotions, the format of diary entry, the reason, the purpose of diary entry. And by the time she narrated her whole uh, day, like what are the events that she did her, in her day that she uh, didn't fit well with the colleague today or something like that. All of those incidents, it started with a story. There was no mention of diary writing for the first 10 minutes of the class. The child is just trying to figure out what is the teacher talking about. And the moment you introduce the topic, that gap is bridged where the child was not focused in the classroom from the first moment. Okay, so this is why I believe that lessons can be learned. There are so many lessons. I can learn a theorem of mathematics if I read it 10 times, practice it 20 times. But if with that theorem, A square plus B square, are coming here up on my screen in form of some funny characters, some funny characters, we learn how to make all of that. If they are coming up here on my screen in some entertaining way with some music playing in the background, I am going to remember it forever. When I'm going to sit in the exam, I'm going to visually pictureize in my head. Children have this ability. We as adults slowly try to move out of this, but children still retain this ability where they retain the visuals of a classroom that, okay, this particular answer was written in the right hand corner of the notebook. So even if I'm not able to write it, I'll just put a little bit pressure on my brain and try to put it down. But if that thing was discussed in the classroom in form of some beautiful colors, then it's going to be there forever. All right. So this is my idea behind storytelling. Again, I am going to ask you a lot of questions in between so that I know uh, we are at the same level and we are discussing about the same topic over here. Right. I don't. Sadly, we all don't have the ability to read someone else's mind. So what do we use over here? We use questions. Constant questioning throughout a session, a workshop, a webinar, a normal conversation. When you meet a stranger, a normal conversation sets off from the moment you look at them or you wave, wave towards them. Right? So that's a story that you can take forward. Now, how do we build upon that? So, yeah, that's why I have another question from, for you all. What do you understand from storytelling and what's your first memory of a story? What's your, I, I'll also tell about my first memory of a story. Okay. Yes. Any, any responses in the chat box? So what do you understand from storytelling? Could be anything. Uh, narrating an incident, definitely it's narrative. Okay. Let's get all your answers here on the screen. So we know that, yeah, let's get all your answers here on the screen. Okay. Uh, 
narrative great then we have okay sharing experiences is okay imagination sharing experiences right okay then we have uh, easy my memory snow white beautiful yeah snow white is okay three one like a lot of people's first memory yeah nothing but visualizing the content beautiful so visualizing the content okay then we have this create sequencing yes a beautiful term over here we have sequencing this is an important part in secondary and senior secondary yeah this is an important part in storytelling when it comes to secondary and senior secondary teaching characters if i were to talk about my favorite part of storytelling it would be characters uh, yeah your voice is a problem again i think some background noise is coming when you are speaking it's not it's the mm -hmm. if i remove the your phone then now like how is it now yeah i think it's better now after removing the your phone after removing the your phone right yeah okay perfect Are your points? Yeah, seven draw story solution for problems, learning and understanding experiences, imagination, moral values. Okay, okay, but now try to tell me about your first memory, your first memory of a uh, a story. What's the first story that you remember? Someone has mentioned Snow White. So if I can try to bring Snow White here on the screen, let's see if that's possible for us. Okay. Dadi Nani story, beautiful. Yes. Um. Just yes. So we are talking about Snow White. Yeah. Let's see if we have Snow White here. Yes. Grandmom. So Dadi Nani stories, King and Queen stories. Yes. Very nice. All right. Horror. Yes. Horror stories are definitely what we begin with. Jungle Book. uh i'll not get the jungle book here exactly but i remember bagira so let's say if i can get a yeah biblical stories right right police and thief chor police stories yes yeah so do you see how while i am interacting with you i can get the photos on the screen at the moment right so we'll be learning about all these yes rabbit so this is about the fables all the fables that we used to hear popular fables cha 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 the story okay yes yeah so the da when the aunt story yes cha 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 the hansel and gretel seven dwarfs cinderella princess okay so i see unity strength vikram vitar fox and great i see that all these stories now when okay thank you for all the responses thank you for all the responses yes this uh kaisa kawa story is quite a popular one so let me bring these <clears throat> elements over here the thirsty crow yeah the lion and the mouse all these fables so thank you thank you so much for all the responses now why did i start with this point is because i wanted to understand that when was the last time you heard the story did you sleep at night yesterday thinking about the thirsty crow did you sleep at night thinking about panchatantra tales princess uh, cinderella's monkey crocodile no right we heard these stories long back and we are not listening to these stories every day but how are these still remembered by you it's like a core memory for all of us now so this is how if a lesson is taught if i ask you to name 10 fables i am sure a lot of you can do that but if you are not a math mathematics teacher and if i ask you to list down 10 theorems can we do that no because it will take a lot of time for us or a little strain on our uh, brain over here to think of 10 theorems exactly of mathematics let's say or let's say 10 equations of science but if i talk to you about 10 princess stories 10 fables 10 mythological stories everything will quickly pop up in our mind one because of the characters two because of the narration third because of the 
visuals. These are the three things that are very, very important in our storytelling. Yeah. So this is why I mentioned that why storytelling? It makes learning more retainable. It binds the topic and sets a narrative. So, okay, someone has mentioned. Yeah, I am. I'll, I'll definitely talk about the site. Someone has mentioned that. Please tell me the site where all the characters are coming. This is Canva, and we'll be. I'll be teaching you how to bring it in PowerPoint, Canva, and we'll talk about a lot of tools now. So, why storytelling? Because it binds the topic and sets a narrative from point A to point B. You do not get a chance for your mind to deviate. And why am I talking about digital storytelling? Because if we were to talk about there's there's a movie when I was young, uh, when I was a little kid, I remember there was there was a movie related to Hanuman uh, Hanumanji. So it was a pretty fa famous movie that used to stream on TV every day. Now I have heard that story from my grandparents. I have read about that story in a book. But I have also seen a movie related to that story. If we are talking about Cinderella, Cinderella story are taught in KG, PKG, all of that. Then when we grow up, we listen, we learn reading it in beautiful story books. All the templates are given to us. But when we watch the Cinderella movie right in front of our eyes, right, that's like a core memory created in our mind, and it's going to be saved there forever. Now, how do we bring this? children are consuming content every day how many of you agree that the kind of content children are consuming is now overloaded there is content in the form of advertisements there is content in the form of cartoons they are watching there is content in the form of classes they are attending there is content on their social media facebook instagram it's not like a we we don't have to disagree to the fact now that children don't use social media it's young children children as young as fourth standard third standard have social media accounts and they are not uh, they are not even restricted by their parents anymore so if there is so much of content overload so many visuals are being saved in their mind and their cognitive growth is continuously being affected by that then why does storytelling come into picture because this is how we can also stay a step ahead in our classroom but now when we talk about all of this there is one question that i get from a lot of teachers my mother is a teacher so when i ask her that why don't you do storytelling in your classroom or why don't you use all these digital tools in your classroom the first answer is who has the time who has the time to sit an hour before the lesson a day before the lesson and take all of that time to create a story put the characters and most of the first thing is your personal time second is if i put so much time how will the syllabus get complete i am sure a lot of you do wonder that syllabus pura karwana hai it is the time to get syllabus complete syllabus will be left at the end of the session if you keep doing these activities and just story telling and all that in the class i i have experience this on my own i have seen teachers talk about this a lot so this is why the kind of storytelling that i approach to is not apart from the lesson plan it's integrated in your lesson plan uh let me directly go to some uh, i'll come to these strengths part later on let me directly go to a story that i shared with my students long back uh let just give me a second i'll share another screen so this is something that i used it in one of my classes and the reason it has more impact is because the topic gets covered it is not available online so the student can't be like sorry for interrupting you i think rishi sir has raised his hand yes rishi sir i'll just yes sir unmute you once <clears throat> so if there's anything you can just post in the chat box not a problem Yeah, yeah. I'm constantly looking at the chat box, so that's. I'll be answering all the questions from there. Okay. Okay. Right, yeah, you can. You can go ahead. Yeah. So okay. So here's like a very small story, and it may look like you know the visuals are not very strong or the visuals are not very great, but it doesn't take much for time for you to. make it so let's say i am going to talk about digestive system with my children okay so i have 
compiled the whole lesson. I have integrated the lesson plan with a story of a character named Ladu. So now who is Ladu? He's a traveler. He likes to travel. He's sweet, chubby. Now children are going to be intrigued by the fact that, okay, wow, we have an inanimate character in our class today. So he's going to talk about his life's last epic adventure. All right. So all of this has been made in the PowerPoint. Now he's going to this, he sees a huge tunnel. Okay, I've pictured it. I, okay, he sees a huge tunnel that has a lot of rocks in it and it is very slimy inside. So Lato is very intrigued and it plans to go inside that tunnel. So inside the tunnel, he finds, what does he find? He finds all of these elements. Okay, so this is how we have talked about Lato. And then over there, these elements grind Lato into smaller Lato's. So, and then we are taking it you know, then it sees a huge pipe. So it's intrigued by the fact that, okay, there's a pipe. Should I go there? There's a tunnel. Which path should I take? Should I go to the east of Vegas pass or should I go to the other side? So it goes over there and it comes out from the other side. So like this. Now, peristaltic movement of the east of Vegas is also explained. Slowly, it's coming down from all of the uh, esophagus pipe, okay, and then we are talking about the inner composition. These some of the photos are actually taken directly from uh, NCRT textbook. Now we are talking about the enzymes that are present. The enzymes are also animated over here, and all of this is made in PowerPoint. So this is just a very small example of how your story does not have to be. I'm just going to continue with this, okay? So I named it as like the bile juice making witch a serious wise uncle related to pancreas, okay, pancreas is a wise uncle, and stomach is just like a cool uh, friend that you can have, so now the child is always going to remember as, yeah, the child is always going to remember the characters over here, okay, so these are the parts, yeah, I, I have mentioned all the enzymes, in. I go about it in detail later on, so these are the enzyme names that are mentioned, all of this. Now it comes about the small intestine villi. So I have infused another friend. It's a burpee. It's confused that who will help me in, you know, creating something that is, uh, how, how do that will go further over here? It's stuck. So now this burpee character over here helps her, helps him that, okay, yeah, you need to find villi. So there's another character introduced from same category, okay? Why did I? Now the Latu is turned into smaller parts and it is going to go further like this. Then we talk about adjacent at the end, right? Uh, yeah, please share the previous slide. Okay, like this. So I hope you understand my message over here is not to make storytelling a separate part, okay? And that's how Latu completed his journey. So at least I have seen Teachers make huge models of digestive system, put it on the board, and then they show it from a stick that, okay, the four items going here, buccal cavity, esophagus, like this, and all that. But instead, we can visually do that. Now, let me show you how I did this. Let's say I have this photo of Ladu. I'm also going to give you some basic, uh, I can't really share these presentations. You can create uh, all of these. Yeah, so let's say I have this. Ladu picture, okay. Now uh, I put it towards the size that I want it to be, okay. Let me put this here in the center. Now, if it's here, there is a tool called animations, okay. This is like a most important PowerPoint presentation tool. And when you're making a PowerPoint presentation, you anyway have to make it for your digital for classrooms these days, right? Instead, you can just add these animations. So let's say I'll remove the animation and try to uh, show it to you once again. Okay. So this animation is there. There is an option of here. If you scroll down, you will find custom path. You can draw the path on your own. Okay. So I'll be covering some five, six tools about presentation over here only. This is an example that I wanted to show you. So if this Laddu is there, you click on this line. Let's say it wants to go here here then here then like this and then it comes here and let's say this is how we are ending it so click on enter now if i put it up on the big screen and if i click on enter it's going to move like this you can increase the timing that you want it to be here 
if you click on the animation number you can increase duration can be increased from here let's say i wanted to take 6 seconds okay so now if i present it it will move a little slowly see it's taking its due course and now it's taking move like this so this is one tool that is custom path okay custom path you all can note it down or take a screenshot or whatever from here this tool custom path tool all right so this is important then comes a uh, linear path okay so i have used it here so let's say i wanted this laddu to go here into the buckle cavity so i have introduced it i think you can see my lines also uh, let me see if it's possible okay i've logged out from phone that's all problem so if you can see i can move around like this so this is custom path and once you click on it it will be available here in the animation panel at the top okay so these are the animations that i keep that people usually use but if you try to this okay try to use these animations let me bring it here and then it will be same to you so now it's going around in a circular path so this is animation here very basic thing but it can energize your classroom in just seconds all right so these are the different animation same here i have used a similar animation now uh i think i'll do one thing i'll share my whole screen and i think there will be a little bit of okay so i have shared my whole screen now let's say i want to go to i open google and i want laddu uh, animated laddu okay so let's see what are the let uh, hey jasleen can you also share the link of the same in the chat box some teachers are asking that if they want the app the presentation sort of made it on my own so there's like no link available to it on internet okay okay so i think uh, educators can just note down the applications you know or the tools just right. this is powerpoint right now so this is all of this is being done on powerpoint i have a few more examples from powerpoint then i'll be sharing a uh, different app so that link i'll keep sharing in the chat box uh okay so yeah this is the laddu thing that we are talking about okay this is the image that i have taken from the internet so copy image and let's say i want to bring it here to my powerpoint screen i paste it here um i think save image would be a better option so if i just drag it here and bring it to this sun now there's a white background another hack or a tool for powerpoint effective use of powerpoint is there's this remove background all the big creators like you know who use photoshop and different different graphic designers they all die for this tool i would say but this is actually easily available in powerpoint in just one click okay so once i do this this pink area will be removed so it says yeah do you see that in just one or two clicks i am able to remove the background i have done that for most of the pictures over here so that there is no background and the photos are more clear so there is no gap in the story creation it's just one click okay so this is powerpoint right now yeah i will be coming to all the different tools we will prepare with the app this is powerpoint you don't have to get this app from anywhere i think all of us make powerpoint presentation very classic ones i'm just talking about hidden tools in it so one is remove background like this okay so just in a few clicks this is done and then comes the animation part whatever path you want to laddu to take you can draw it. okay let's see this laddu is going to take this path so if i put it up the laddu is taking that path that i've just created so i hope this is clear here okay please show again the steps to remove the background sure okay there is this double click on the image you will find this one this option in the corner double click and here in the corner remove background so once you do that the pink part or you if you want to mark some area to keep you can do that also let's say this area is kept now so this is one example uh let me come to another one here uh yeah now i'm going to talk about this is first for primary this is for secondary level or senior secondary also 
now i wanted to talk to students about descriptive writing right now descriptive writing is going to be a yeah we make ppt we always make ppt but we never try these options because we feel that okay we will take a uh, you know a design from here a sample design can be taken just put the content and it's done i understand that lesson planning takes a lot of time and who has the time but i believe that it takes the equal amount of time to put it this way it's how you make the lesson plan for a story do not make the story an extra part of the class integrate it with the classroom so i have taken this uh, quite a famous story share some so i have taken this quite a famous madagascar movie clip and once i play this okay mama Not for me, fresh, straight out the ground. It's a clip easily available on YouTube for Disney movies. Okay, so you can use this. But how is this my story now? I wanted to talk to children about descriptive writing, describing a place. It's an important part for class eight. Okay, now I have introduced the character Melman. Now he is talking about he's a giraffe and everything. all of this is done and then i show this video to them and then i ask them tell me 10 words that come to your mind when you look at this video what are the words that come to your mind so on the screen editing is available so if you tell me it's grand i can write it make your storytelling interactive add steps in it where they can also respond so all of this is available then i have taken it to this thing this is one part of it where i can do a virtual safari with them this is one part of it where i can do a virtual safari with them so i can show them the screen and this is a, this is a, a wildlife park there in germany so you can just easily find this on google maps so this becomes a part of their story now it's like they have been somewhere they have experienced a part of it and if i ask them to describe this place now it's going to be a new experience altogether for them so this is how a story is inculcated so these are the friends thank you friends i started with this so hello friend how are you all that so these are the characters who are going to be their friends okay so i hope this part is clear now i want to move to a new tool i'll stop sharing this yeah the new tool that i'm going to talk about now is animator animator and all of these things right with i'm able to share the screen yeah so okay let's see So this is another tool over here, Animaker.com. Let me just quickly copy paste it here so you all can use it. This is this is Animaker.com. Okay, I think I've added it as a direct message. Yeah. So this is Animaker.com, and over here, yesterday only, not yesterday, I think a week ago, when I wanted to make my own resume, I was exploring this. So how do we go about this? We Let's. See. This is a template. Okay, it's a template, and you can edit it on your own. So this is a tool that you can use easily. Let me see if it loads properly. Till then, here's uh, what we were discussing about in Canva. So the same thing. This is Canva.com. I think you all can register for it, and it's free for teachers. You can get a free premium access for this. So this is Canva.com. I'm sharing all the links in the chat. and this is that it has this option of integrating elements so if i want to create a story about laddu or the same story i can get my elements from here itself okay so uh, if i want something animated shapes or some different character that i want to talk about let's say here's a bunny who's going to be there in our class today so all of these things can be used from here i what i love most about uh, canva is it makes math very fun because it has all these uh, numbers that are present in more colorful and better form where you can create equations or go about using all of these tools in making your storytelling more effective 
okay so it has all of these tools that are available over here and above that there is a chart bubble option so you can add the chart here okay and go to text option over here once you go there you can click on add a heading and write anything today we will talk about whatever it is and we can place it here so this is one tool that we can clearly explore yeah. so i hope my uh, yeah this was canva so this is the one that i was using it's very easy and very fun to use in classroom when you are doing live interaction in a story so if it's going to be a story about tortoise and deer then you can easily use this one so that live options are available all right so let's come to this one yeah this is a tool that i found to be really innovative and like boom to teachers if you want to make videos like students consume in the form of content later on okay so let's see i have only created a few slides for now but this is how it go this is something that i was trying yesterday and how can you easily make this let's say you start from a blank screen you click here you find a lot of characters okay once these characters are there let's say i want to use this boy okay so if i place this boy here in the center there are some options that are visible here i can just click on this and get the option okay so these crime and all right i can use this or maybe is one something okay so he will give that expression and uh, this is animator.com i think i've shared it uh yeah so if you want to give an expression to him let's say click here expression so you will find different expressions on his face like this a beautiful animation can be created in just a very few steps so these can be static also and these can be uh in different different frames also this is how you can add more frames scene one scene two three four five six seven eight nine ten like this so i hope this helps everyone to make your classroom learning more and more easier because i have a lot of examples to show but i am pretty sure i don't have enough time to show all the examples so this is animator.com this is canva.com that you can use okay now uh, there is one last thing that i want to share with you all i'll share my screen from phone now and talk about these options from over there so yeah if i see there are some apps that i've saved here so there's a homework app that you can use to create assignments and all the worksheets and everything so there is this one app for creating assignments and worksheets and then there is this one app that i've used toontastic app it's like it's an app by google that is used for creating tunes that children will think that it's coming directly from uh, let's say a visual animator sort of person okay and i made i was trying to work on this so it's quite an easy one to do all you have to do is click on this short story it's one of the easiest apps that i have used it literally guides you on your own okay so uh, yeah it will set up a scene for you and once you start with the scene you can click on your character uh, first of all a setting can be chosen let's say i want to talk about uh underwater world today okay so i can use this setting and then i can use the characters from here okay so today my character is an octopus this fish i don't know if it's a shark or a dolphin but let's say these are my characters for today so what do i do i can move so i don't know i'm not sure if you can pin my screen and look it i'm just moving it with my fingers okay so i can just move it around place the characters like this and if i click on start it will start recording my audio and at the same time i can move it around okay so i can say that if i'm starting it now hey how are you did you have a great day today yes i did and i am just too tired today so i am going to sleep so that character has exit okay so if i click on pause right now 
and this will and then I can click a move from here. It's gloomy. So if I present it, just because I'm shared from uh, Google uh, Zoom also, I'm not sure if the audio will come up. So you can quickly. Yeah, yeah, my audio won't come because I'm also sharing from Zoom. But the, this is the story that I just made. So it's coming up with the dialogues as well. So I hope it's understood now that this is, and it's easily saved. It will come up here like the end towards the, and it gives a good applause also here. It's very beautifully made by Google. So you can save it, export it to your gallery, and it will be saved over here. Okay, so this is one app that I wanted to talk about. Then similarly, same app, this is Plotagon. This is another go-to app. Yeah, I'll mention the names in the, yeah, is it a Google app? It's Spoontastic. And there's Plotagon. That means you are plotting. A, and there's also Puppet Time. Puppet Time is another wonderful app. Then you can use all of this. I think I have... For some reason, my messages are going in personal. If you can add these app names. Okay. So these are the apps that I wanted to talk about seeing. Plotagon is a similar app for this. So, yeah. I will just quickly end this here. If someone has raised a question, you can put it in the chat box. So these are the different, different things that I wanted to talk about when it comes to storytelling. And there are endless tools and apps that are yeah, Hindi and Sanskrit. Yes, my mom is a Hindi teacher, so I understand Hindi ke liye kaun si app chahiye. It's this one, uh, Canva. Canva and Google can be used. In fact, any app can be used because you are recording audio, so you can record it in Hindi. But if I'm going to type here, um, let's say I can open a translator from English to Hindi. So then whatever I will be writing, I do have a lot of Hindi assignments in my, this thing. So hello, if namaste, then you can easily bring it here on Canva also. Okay. You can, you have a lot of font options as well. So all of the characters can be added. So this can be used for, yeah, homework app can be used. Homework app, uh, I think, can be used on phone. Can you share the name of the apps? Yes. Canva, Toon Testing, Puppet Time, Animaker. Then there is plot again as well. So I hope most of the doubts are answered by now. Yeah, so this is what we were discussing. So this is important about storytelling. So open-ended questions, like I mentioned, if you ask the right question in the beginning or towards the ending, the students will be intrigued. Character setting, laddu, is a good example for using a character. How we bring it here. Then digital tools. These are the digital tools that I've mentioned about. Then we come to contextual tone. We are talking about digestive system to take a character that is a food, food item. So understand the contextual tone. Performance-led classroom, obviously it will be, you are a narrator, you are an artist over here presenting it. So it will become a performance. And interactivities, like I mentioned in the Canva and asking all the questions. So all of this is there. Then... Yeah, these are the storytelling tools that I've talked about. There's a Nearpod also, and it's like a brilliant tool to access. So you can try using it. And I'll share the link in the chat box for Nearpod or maybe just mention the name for now because it's something that takes a lot of time to discuss, but it's like a brilliant tool. And just like Nearpod, we have homework app that uh, Harsha has mentioned like a couple of times now. This is for using assessment. Whatever questions, whatever topic you have taught can be taken up uh, as an assessment towards the end, adding questions, MCQs, quizzes, and all of that. So that can be done. And then we have basic steps of digital storytelling. The reason I'm rushing through this part is because I believe that from what the examples and the demo that I've given, these aspects are a little bit clear. So selecting the topic and the setting, the background and character photos, that means from, you can either get it from Google or you can get it from Canva itself. Then the topic and the setting, like how uh, I was talking about a jungle setting when I wanted to talk about descriptive writing. Then speech bubbles and narration is quite important. Then transitions and animations. I think I've given you quite a lot of examples. You can click on animations at the top and you can go ahead with that. Then this is the steps you can follow. 
Okay, so don't worry about animating each thing in the beginning. Wait for finishing your topic and then animate it. Then digital storytelling, interactive methods. I think problem solving, narrative building, all these things were mentioned by you all only in the beginning of the session. So I believe we should try to understand this better. Yeah. So Jean Piaget, this all of these storytelling techniques come from in my learning and understanding. I believe that Jean Piaget, when he he's like he was like a uh, psychologist and he mentioned about constructivism. So constructivism is where children build their knowledge on their own. So it goes from one step to another to another on their own. You are telling a story, how they are perceiving it and how are the points that they are mentioning is something that is building in their schema, their understanding. So this makes a classroom constructivist a, cl a constructivist classroom rather than just being in lecture method or just being theory. Okay, so all of this can be done over here. Uh, now, three stages I wanted to cover primary, secondary, and senior secondary. At primary level, the main motive is that you should use bright colors, animated characters, use objects, fictional elements, and sounds. These are very important when using making something for primary level. Same is carried on to secondary level, but the type of colors that I use have to be toned down a little bit. If I use my background today as, uh, if I use my background today, let's say of this color, then there could have been a lot of confusion, right? If I used uh, a bright pink color, you would have been judging my color choice over here because you are all adults over here, seniors over here. So the kind of colors that we choose in our story is very, very important. So this creates an impact on the kind of retention the child is going to have in their schema, in their understanding. Okay. Same for senior secondary, the characters. So Laddu can work from primary level. Okay. For secondary level, still it can work. But for senior secondary, they might consider it as a joke. So, for to you know uh, communicate to them, the character choice needs to be a different one. Maybe here we can choose a baker. How a baker is taking the product in our body. You can maybe choose an enzyme that okay, it's taking it from one step to another. It got brain is con controlling it. So, choose characters that are more real and more relatable to se senior uh, students. Okay, yeah, and these are the most important things. You want to take a screenshot, or anyone wants to save it, I don't mind. So these are the tips for uh, most important one. That is, the first one is color splash, dialogue optimization. Do not overload the dialogues on a screen. Do not put the full theorem in just a chat box. The student will be overwhelmed. The impact of story will be dead on the spot. Colors. What sort of sounds you are using, like in the app I showed, it was using sounds that are gloomy, loving, excited, horror. And have one thought and one objective. Do not complicate the story by adding way too many options in it, way too many characters. There's police also, there's a thief also, there's, let's say, a leader also. 10,000 characters are not going to solve the story. Make it as easy as possible. The idea is that it should be easy for you to make. Okay, NEP 2020 can write it in theory that there should be experiential learning for teach uh, for students, and uh, you know teachers should be able to do storytelling, sports integrated, arts integrated. But what about the time you get? How much time you get to complete the syllabus? Nobody has the time to sit around and make such grand lesson plans. You can do that only if you use these small tips and tricks. Okay, just things that require same amount of clicks that your regular lesson planning requires. Okay, so this is one thing that I wanted to mention. And there are two things that can be done. That is storyboard creation. I'll just wrap it because I know I'm going over time, Harsha, right? So, so if we don't mind really. It's such an amazing session. Teachers are just <laughs> yeah. very happy. So you may continue, no problem. Okay, just this is the last thing that I wanted to mention. There is something called storyboarding where, where you can uh, create all your scenes and plan it. So it's like a lesson plan for your story. 
so you can do that on storyboard.com okay uh yeah so this can be i will mention this in the chat box also you can take it from storyboard.com and it can be used so that uh, it's quite an easy one whatever setting you want is available here whatever background you can think of is kind of going to be available over here okay so let's say i'm talking about igloo i just have to drag it then i'm going to talk about characters i believe that there are so many characters in this one that you can spend hours okay so just select any and once you place it here there is an option to add text so if she is in this direction the text bubble will be like this this i believe is the most easiest one to create a story for teachers who are like running on late on time or anything like last minute preparation so anything can be added it's to hold here so anything can be added in this and you can continue with the same story that you have in mind so all of these options are available in this the colors can be changed so i believe this is like the most easiest tool that can be used and it's kind of an old website so the layout is very easy to understand there is not overwhelming information for you all so yeah this is what i wanted to talk about and then mind map is similar to it whatever you want to go just click on templates in canva write mind map and you will find a lot of options for creating a mind map just you can get that and everything here is can be edited so yes open to question answer and that's most of it from my end i do have a lot of things to show but i think it will be a lot of information then so uh, okay i we can actually see that uh, <laughs> that was an astounding session and that has driven like everyone very very crazy right about now so if there's any questions here educators please please do post in the chat box so that we can take it up thank you nishit nishit ma'am so it thank was you great. for all the feedback <laughs> and all the plans that was leading it side by side yes okay so uh, okay so one question actually could you please share the free app for teaching math for higher secondary yes i have a name for that app um i can't find it immediately but yes there is an app for that but for now i can mention that animaker can be used and storyboarding can be used for this one animaker and storyboarding there's a yeah okay. animaker and storyboarding can be used for it there's another app that specifically can be used for math that is nearpod okay miss manju is writing large of all for the session <laughs> thank you thank you ma'am oh my god okay any applications for social science for 9th and 10th social science for 9th and 10th again canva is a go to tool i use canva a lot for all of this canva accountancy class more interesting apps i believe all the apps can be used completely for any of the options that are available for all the subjects like uh, i take for science english together i use all the apps it's just the idea that you are going to take up for the story if you're going to talk about accounts it depends on the topic that you're going to bring up so all of these apps can be used for any of the subjects okay Comprehension passage again. Canva can be used. Animator can be used. Yeah. Any other question? How to save the videos? Just click on download. It will be saved. And Hindi. Hindi. Yeah. Same. I mentioned all the apps are supporting the Hindi text, so it will be same. Hindi and Sanskrit is same. All the apps support Hindi. What is in the app for pre primary i think for pre primary the best app to use is this one toontastic that i showed toontastic anything else yeah okay subject hindi again all the apps support the hindi language like i showed over here so you can use your story idea your process and bring it to hindi class 10 if it's yeah storyboarding is a good option commerce all of this all the subjects all the apps can be used 
detailed tabular format in these apps. Yeah, okay. Let me go and show that. For accountancy, if you want to make, go to elements. In Canva, go to elements, write uh, infographics. I think in infographics or tables. So you can get tables here, colorful tables. Okay. And uh, we can get over here. Yeah, so different graphs can be available are available over here, and all the options related to this graph will show up over here. So you can change the colors and play around with everything. Yeah. Anything in other questions that I might have skipped? No, I think we are done with the yeah questions for now. All right, all right. So thank you, thank you so much for the amazing session. And oh my God, we have taken extra ten minutes of your time. Very sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, we'll just present a small vote of thanks, Jasleen, before we you know allow you to take your leave. All right. Okay. So, all right. So, I give it a great honor and privilege to propose this astounding word of thanks for the enlightening session we all had. And I think that is something we can all, all align on. So, on behalf of all the educators here and the homework app team, I would like to extend a very warm gratitude to you, Jasleen, especially for taking out time on a Sunday, you know, evening. That, that's kind of, you know, a lot. And yes, to grace us, you know, with this immense knowledge in the field of various tools like, you know, Toontastic and Animaker, etc. And how to exactly implement digital storytelling in the CB. BSC curriculum. So a warm regards to you, ma'am, and thank you so much for this astounding session. We want, and we really want such sessions in the future as well. I think that is also something, you know, all of us can <laughs> align on. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.